What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the program. Today, I'm talking to one of the top heavyweight contenders in the country. You can catch his next fight at LFA 181. Stephen Asplin joins me right now from Minnesota. Stephen, welcome to the program. Looking forward to this fight at uh, LFA 181 in another month or so. I bet you're really excited to go out there and uh, put on a show. Man, first and foremost, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, and all this fight kind of flew up. I feel like this is one of the longer layoffs I've had and it flew by the fastest. So I'm ready to get in there and get this shit over with. <laughs> I, I completely understand. One of the things about you that I've noticed, I did some internet stalking on you. I like to do my research. I like to be prepared and I'm going through your social media and I see old pictures of you and I'm like, who is this dude? Is this the same dude? Am I on like the right Instagram account? And to like a total body recomp, you go from like being like a chubby dude to now one of the top heavyweight contenders in the country. That's pretty phenomenal, man. Like, how did we get here? I grew up a chubby kid and, uh, you know, I've, I just experienced getting bullied and fucked with my whole childhood. And, you know, I went through a bad breakup when I was like 17, 18 or 19 and that was kind of the catalyst. I just realized that I needed to make a change because I, you know, high school dropout, high school dropout, you know, missed my opportunity to play division one ball. So it was just like, you know, I'm, I'm sweating my ass off sitting in an Xfinity store where I was working at. So I went to the bathroom, lifted up my shirt and said, today's day we changed, you fat fuck. And uh, didn't happen that day, but we got her done. So, um, but yeah, well, I watched, uh, watched my dad fight my whole childhood growing up too, man. He was ranked number one in Minnesota for quite some time and helped me fall in love with the sport. And after I lost the weight, I said, fuck it, I'll try my hand and never thought I'd be in this this you know uh situation this position you know talking with people about me being a top prospect is fat steven would be so fucking proud man <laughs> I, I think it's uh absolutely something else and that part of your backstory i think is what probably makes you so relatable to a ton of people and like there are a lot of people out there that see guys like you and you know from your starting point to today and it makes people wonder like oh wow well all kinds of sort of things are possible for me. I'm sure you've heard some wild stuff. And I'm just kind of curious, like, what's the craziest thing somebody's ever said to you about your own story and how it maybe impacted them? I had a guy on Instagram, Hulky Dad, and he's got like a hundred and some thousand followers. And I I I haven't even broke a thousand yet. And this was like almost a year and a half ago. And he reached out to me and said that I was an inspiration to him and him losing weight and to see. I, I've had kids reach out to me, you know, overweight kids reach out to me. And it's just like, I'm 25 years old. And I'm, I got a two year old little girl that I'm trying to be a good man for. And, you know, good man for my, my lady and my family. And, but I'm, you know, I'm a pothead. I'm, I'm a dork. Uh, I'm a foul mouth idiot, you know? So it's just, it's crazy to have people looking up to me. You know, it touches my heart like no other. And I'll always do whatever I can to respond to anybody that, you know, wants to say anything. It's just, it's unreal to me. It all still feels kind of like a dream to have people look at me the way that they do. I want to talk about a guy that I'm a fan of, Thomas Peterson. He's the former LFA heavyweight <laughs> champion. He's a guy that you know really well. I'm just curious, like, what sort of impact has he had on your uh, MMA career? Because not too many people have the luxury of getting time uh, with somebody of his caliber day in and day out. The amount of building up that Tommy has done for me and my mental has been extraordinary. Um, I'm finally, I finally believe that I'm stepping into my own because of him. Um, you know, the training sessions that we have, this, this boy is a dog and puts on a grueling pace in these training sessions that I'm so excited for the world to be able to see on the, you know, this next couple of UFC fights. Um, I wasn't shit for a wrestler, especially when I started. And now I have the utmost confidence in getting up at the very least, you know, if you take me down, I'll bust my ass to get up, but, um, and then the, just the people that he brings in with him, like I've, I've met so many amazing people through him, like Lawrence, Lawrence Phillips, because I've been able to be in this training room. And Tommy is one of the most sincere, genuine, kind people that I've ever met, like period. And uh, I'm so grateful that I have him as like a, a tutor and brother. I, I thank him all the time I tell him I love him all the time. That's my big brother, man. Can you tell me a little bit, Stephen, uh, about the gym that you train at? Who are your coaches and who are your uh, other teammates aside from Peterson? Yeah, absolutely. So I started out at uh, McCoon's Martial Arts. That was, and I'm still training there. Uh, I'd say my main gym's the little basement gym that me and Tommy do. 
or we work out of. Um, it's just one of our coaches' house who built a nice little facility in his basement with a good space. And we got me, Tommy, uh, Lawrence Phillips comes up, busts our ass on occasion. Uh, Isaiah Gomez, or yeah, he's he's a beast. I'm so excited to see him in his next bout, his last bout. He fucking ragged all the kid. I don't know, 12 takedowns or something like that. And just, it was showing. Uh, and then my boy Guzzi, Alvin Hines, uh, he's another big boy that's been coming in and working with us. Just a room full of guys that are all so willing to be humble and share whatever knowledge that we have to get better. You know, I, I, as I'm sure you know, all these MMA fighters, like everyone's a tough guy, you know, and I feel like in this room, no one's trying to be, be the biggest swinging dick. Everyone's willing to just, you know, hear what somebody has to say or add on to something. Um, Derek Getzel, Chris McCoon have been my head coaches uh, bringing me up. And they've, man, if it wasn't for Derek, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be such an unorthodox, weird striker. Um, he's set me up for some greatness. And then Caitlin Young has been a huge, huge piece of these, these last couple of fights. Um, she's been instrumental in helping me believe in my strikes and really just letting shit go and fly. But your your uh 2023 you were uh wrapping up your amateur career and then toward the end of the year you made your pro debut at Mecca 20 and I kind of wanted to back up like how did you know the time was right to uh make the jump up to the pros Tommy was on my ass for like the last 3 fights to go pro you never know until you know man you know and if I'm I went out there I out wrestled an Iowa state wrestler in uh my first title defense last amateur debut uh, I took on an Iowa heavyweight state champ and Pedro Gomez uh, to earn my first title in MCC. Was able to hold my own with him, and then I outstruck a judo kid. I outstruck another boxer and Rick Jones my first time as an amateur on LFA. And it's just, I get all these affirmations from people that have been in the game, and I don't think I'm shit. I, I have a real confidence issue. <laughs> and, I, you know, being a fat kid, I'm getting there. I really am. Pro career to date. Anthony Garrett, you knock this dude out in 10 seconds. Billy Ray Valdez, I know that dude. He's a scary dude. And you end up putting this guy away. And can you tell me a little bit about the Billy Ray fight? Like, he's a big, tough dude. What was your game plan going up against a guy like that who's probably similar to you in that, you know, this guy is really strong and he puts people away. I'm sure you watched some of his film and were like, oh, oh wow, yeah. he's going to be a bad dude. I have to. I if uh, if I don't watch film, I feel so ill prepared. Like I want to know what I'm walking into, and I I don't watching guys knock out other guys. It doesn't intimidate me. That shit lights a fire under my ass, and I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be fun. I'm not. I, I love MMA because it's not boxing. You don't have to go undefeated for 30 fights to go fucking big. You know, you don't. You just need to make sure it's entertaining. Fight your heart out and be genuine, and people people gravitate towards you. Mm -hmm. And I think that the majority, majority of heavyweights are going into these fights assuming that we're going to be done in a round. That's like, I, I get it. We're big and it only takes one, but I'm coming in there and I'm going to pepper your ass up from the outside and find an opening. So I, I knew that as long as I stayed on the outside, I chopped them up, belly, legs, throw some head strikes. I'd be able to take his cadence away from him. He's not used to being put on the back foot. And so I, I'm a dummy. I Don't get me wrong. I'm a fucking idiot, but... That being said, I got some fight IQ. <laughs> well, you end up doing your job. You end up getting the doctors involved. They stop this fight in the very first round. Were you surprised that the fight ended up getting called the way that it did? I I am, and I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I obviously I wanted the fight to go into my favor. Like doctor stoppage is a win's a win. But I I swear to God, if you look at my story, I post a photo occasionally uh, when I get excited for my fights, but it, this, the cut that I had was just over his eye, and it was down to his skull. You could see his skull from, like, when I was punching him even, one of the still frames I posted on my Instagram. I figured they would have let him go on for the 12 seconds. One round, there's not a good chance he's coming out for the second if we finish, you know, and I thought it was a little bullshit, but that being said, I was... With all due respect to Billy, I was whooping his ass. You know, I, I landed way more combos, and I was even on the inside landing combos. He wanted to run it back. I'm down. We can get down with the get down anytime. Congratulations to you. It was a very impressive performance. I looked at that, and I was like, wow, like, okay, th we 
we might have somebody here in you. And here you go. Uh, a few months later, you're going to be making your uh, third professional fight. This time, you'll be going up against Larry Gonzalez. But you weren't supposed to fight Larry. You're supposed to fight a different opponent. Can you tell me what's up with the changeup and how did we get to uh, Gonzalez? What, how did all that uh, uh, go down? Man, I you know I'm not trying to talk shit on Jimmy Barnes, but this is the second time we were scheduled to fight each other, and this is the second time he's pulled out. Uh, I know why he pulled out of the first one. I have messages and it was a shit reason. And for it to be like this and then pull out a month before is to me, that is unreasonable. I put my heart and soul into these camps and, uh, I prepare for these guys per guy. I'm not, I'm not doing it as a generalization. So, you know, it was a little different. Uh, Larry is another striker, you know, good, big hands, explosive power. So not much of a difference and you know he's i he's definitely more skilled than jimmy so i'm i'm excited this is this is exactly what i wanted i was sad that i had jimmy with all due respect to him i mean he just didn't have any no notoriety behind his name he's own one i mean it's a lose lose for me if i lose to him i get my ass whooped by what other people want to consider a can none of these assholes are getting in there by the way i don't think it's fair to call anybody a can and then i got larry so now it's it worked out he's four and one and uh, I can't see it hitting the mat unless unless he shoots, because I ain't shooting. Your opponent, he is a very talented fighter. I've seen him perform before. I saw him beat uh, a Samoan dude at uh, Uriah Faber's A1 Combat last yeah. year. So he looks like he's the real deal. And for you, when you look at this guy, you get a win over him. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you take that streak one fight further, 3-0. and Like, what do you kind of see for the rest of 2024 for you uh, at a 3-0 and record? activity baby I, I don't give a shit about like i was saying man i don't give a shit about this record obviously i want it to stay clean but as long as i'm able to you know stay away from injuries and stay healthy it's why not stay active i i got a little girl i'm trying to provide for and gain custody of at least more and uh you know I, I, these guys are taking money out of my pocket and taking food off of my little girl's table so Y'all are going to have to fucking kill me to get me out of there. I'm willing to die. I hope y'all are. One final question for everybody who's never seen you fight before, and they're getting ready to tune in here on April 5th. What can they expect when they watch you uh, fight Larry Gonzalez here in a few weeks? Expect a heavyweight that likes to throw a lot of stupid shit, a lot of awkward shit. I'm not a traditional heavyweight. I like throwing from weird angles. And uh, I don't know. Win or lose, it's going to be exciting, and I'm excited to step in there with Larry. I'm excited for the fans to gain a taste of what both of us can bring to this table. I don't think anyone's stock's going down after this fight, but uh, I think it's going to be a first-round knockout in either of our favor. Ladies and gentlemen, LFA 181, that happens on April 5th. Make sure you tune in for that. Steven, I want to give you the final word, sir. If there's anyone that you would like to thank or anyone you need to shout out before we conclude, let's uh, get that taken care of. Thank you much, brother. Uh, I'd like to shout out first and foremost, my team, McCoon's Martial Arts and Basement Gym, man. I wouldn't be anything without you guys. And I'm so grateful. My coaches, Derek, Caitlin, my big brother, Tommy, Aaron Skipataris, uh, Isaiah, Lawrence, the uh, list goes on. I got a ton of people I can name, but my parents for supporting me, my little girl for being my fuel and my fucking pride and joy, uh, my lady for being so supportive, uh, the painter guy, local, uh indoor and outdoor painting wonderful person personable does great work uh ace athletics down in rochester minnesota they're a great local gym that'll help you bring any or any athlete looking to go to the next level for physicality they will do that for you yeah pat baxter's masonry and concrete and asplin and sons construction thank you guys all for the support i couldn't couldn't do this without you um Oops. and anybody tuning in with the support thank you uh fat kid chasing a dream and you guys are helping me achieve it so thank you Stephen, I appreciate you being on the program, sir, and I look forward to having you back very soon. Much love, brother. Thank you again.